get ready to make my gorgeous red velvet cake made gluten and grain free with almond flour. It has buttery velvety cake layers with a luscious and tangy cream cheese frosting. It's made with clean natural ingredients with roughly half the sugar of the traditional version. I'm showing you how easily you can make it as a stunning layered cake or elegant mini cakes. We're gonna start by preparing our pan and you have lots of options. This will make two eight inch round cakes or three six inch cakes or one jelly roll sheet pan. I'm gonna show you how I bake it in a sheet pan. First, I like to layer it with some parchment paper, which will just make it much easier for getting the cakes out of the pan and ensure nothing sticks. And then I'll spray it with some coconut oil. And then we'll set this aside. To make the cake batter, we're gonna start by mixing together our dry ingredients. And I do recommend using a sifter. And there's lots of different kinds you can use to get the same result. We're gonna start with one and a half cups of almond flour. And then I'll add two thirds of a cup of tapioca flour, half a cup of organic cane sugar, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then I have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. And then I'll just shake these together while it sifts down into our pan. And this lets you see all of those little clumps that would have been in your batter. And then we just take a spatula and we just mash it against the strainer, which very easily breaks them up. And then we can set this aside. Next, we're gonna to mix together our wet ingredients. We're going to use a third a cup of butter, but we want to have it melted so that it mixes in easily. So I'm gonna put this in my microwave for 25 seconds. And now that our butter is melted, I'll set this aside. In our bowl, we're going to add four eggs, a third a cup of applesauce for some natural sweetness, a fourth a cup of maple syrup. Using maple syrup helps us reduce the amount of cane sugar that we have to add to get a nice sweet cake. And it's a little bit lower on the glycemic index. Next, we'll add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons of vanilla, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and a third a cup of our melted butter. Now we want to add our red food coloring and you can use any variety that you like. There's lots of really great organic options, but they're not gonna give you as red of a color. So if you really want the most vibrant red color, then gel is going to give you the best result. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of red gel. And we want to make sure we get all of the red gel out of our measuring spoon. So I'm gonna put it in my batter and then stir it around until it looks like I've gotten all of it out of the spoon. Now I'll just take a whisk and stir these together until they're well combined. And now we can add in our dry ingredients. And then I'll gently stir this together just until it's all incorporated. Wow, that is a beautiful red velvety batter. And now we can carefully pour it into our prepared jelly roll pan. And then I'll gently wiggle my pan just to help spread that batter. Give it a few taps just to get out any air bubbles. Well, that looks beautiful and it is ready to go into a 350 degree oven for about 28 to 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out of the center clean. Now we can make our cream cheese frosting and in a large mixing bowl, I've added two blocks of cream cheese or 16 ounces. And it is important to have it room temperature so that it can blend down smoothly. Then I'm adding half a cup of butter or one stick, one teaspoon of vanilla. And to enhance that tangy flavor, I'm adding one teaspoon of lemon juice and two pinches of salt. And then I'm gonna mix this together until it's smooth and creamy. Now I'm gonna pour in about half of our four cups of organic powdered sugar. And then I'll mix this together and then add in the other half. And now for the second half. Oof. And that's why I didn't add it all at once. Wow, that is gorgeous. I think we need a quality control pinky test. Mm. That is the perfect ratio of butter to cream cheese and I love adding that little extra tang from the lemon juice. I'm gonna show you how you can make your red velvet cake as a triple layer frosted cake. Now you can frost this cake just on a plate but I highly recommend having a turntable. We're gonna start by setting our first cake layer. I'm just gonna make sure that that is centered over the table. And then I'll dish out a nice big scoop of frosting. And I'm gonna go with two scoops and I can turn my table and push it to the outer edge. I'm gonna add one more smaller scoop right to the middle to make sure we have a nice thick layer inside our cake. Next, I'll add the second layer and repeat. And I'll add the same amount of frosting as the first layer. Now we can add on our top layer. We're gonna make sure that it's nice and centered and level. To make sure that the outside of our cake is beautiful and white without any red crumbs, we want to add what we call a crumb coat of frosting first. And that's just a really thin layer of frosting that intentionally will collect all the crumbs of our cake. 
And to keep those crumbs out of our main frosting bowl, I'm going to scoop some frosting into a separate bowl. And then we'll start on the top and just spread this out nice and thin. And then allow it to overflow down the side. And then using our turntable makes it really easy to spread the frosting. Now we have a nice smooth crumb coating all the way around our cake. So now we're gonna put it into our freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes to allow this outer frosting layer to set. And we'll put our bowl of cottage cheese frosting into the fridge. I just took the cake out of the freezer where it's been for about the last 15 minutes. So now our crumb coat is set and we're ready to continue frosting our cake. So now I can load up my spatula and just start spreading frosting on the side of the cake, making sure to push it all the way down to the bottom. Now that I have the sides of the cake kind of evened out, you can decide what kind of finish you want on the sides. Depending on how meticulous you are, you can make it perfectly straight, or I like to use what I call just kind of like a Venetian plaster effect, which is just making some kind of broad strokes with my spatula, which gives it the effect of like a beautiful plastered wall. And I love that it doesn't have to be perfect. Now you can decide if you want to leave your cake just a beautiful cream color, or if you want to add a little bit of sprinkles and pizzazz. I'm gonna pipe a beautiful wave design around the upper edge, but I'd like to have some of these red sprinkles in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those sprinkles now before I pipe that edge. So I'm just gonna put them in my hand so that I can make sure that they don't bounce off and onto other parts of the cake where I don't want them. And this is going to give a beautiful indication of the color of the cake that is inside. Now I think I'm gonna go ambitious and add some sprinkles around the bottom half of the cake. So to do this, I'm gonna put some again in my hand. And then I'll very carefully tilt the cake. And I'll just let them kind of bounce off of the round table and up onto the cake. So it kind of does all the work for me. So to pipe on our wave, I'm just using a jumbo star tip and I just dropped it right inside of my piping bag. And then I'll just fill it up with the remaining frosting. So to pipe this wave pattern, we're gonna start by tilting our bag to the left. Then we're gonna pipe up and over and then drag it for a tail. Okay, we can do this. Here we go. So I can go up and then pipe out frosting and go over and let it come out as a tail. So starting where we left off, I'm going to pipe up and over and then give it a tail. And then we're right back where we started. Let that tuck right underneath. And then to make our wave on top look extra special and elegant, I'm gonna come in and place some of our beautiful white pearls. I love how they're nice and subtle, but add a little bit of cake bling. Well, that looks gorgeous, and it's ready to go into the fridge to set until it's ready to serve. Well, here is our cooked and cooled jelly roll cake. As soon as I took the pan out of the oven, I put it on a cooling rack and then allowed it to cool. And then I removed the cake from the pan and put it onto my cooling rack until it cooled completely. And it still has the parchment paper underneath, which makes it very easy to transfer onto my cutting board. You can cut your mini cakes any size that you like. I found that this little two inch cookie cutter works really well, but you could also use a cup or a jar or anything that has a nice thin edge. So I'm just gonna put it right up into the corner and stamp out a mini cake. And then I'll keep moving down to try and fit in as many as I can. And then once we have all the cakes cut out, we can assemble them. And I'm just using this cake platter to make them look extra special. To apply the layers of cream cheese frosting, I'm just using a jumbo cake tip with the star pattern. And then I'm just dropping it right into my piping bag. And then I'll fill it with my cream cheese frosting and we are ready to go. So we'll start by setting the bottom layer of our mini cake. And then I'm just gonna go in and pipe a circle of frosting around the outside. And I'm not worried too much about it reaching the edge because then we're going to take our second cake, place it on top and gently push it down and scoosh that frosting out to the edge. And then I'm going to pipe on a slightly thicker circle of frosting all the way around to where I started and then gently into the center and then pull straight up in the air to get this really adorable little frosting peak. <laughs> well, those look adorable and you can decide if you want to leave them as is or if you want to add a little bit more decoration. To enhance the red color of the red velvet cake, I'm gonna sprinkle on a few of these little red knob pearls just to add a little more color and some glamour. 
And then to enhance that creamy color and add a little bit more elegance, I'm gonna add on these white pearl sprinkles. So I'll just add a few of those right on top of my red sprinkles. Ha, lucky bounce. Well, those look gorgeous and they are going to make any occasion a very special occasion. And then an added benefit of cutting these mini cakes out of your sheet cake is that you have some scraps. That makes a really delicious sample. <laughs> Mmm, that tastes divine. <laughs> that seriously tastes incredible. As soon as I bite in, I get the delicious tang from the cream cheese frosting, and then I get that really smooth cake texture that is just velvety and moist and spongy, and it has just a light taste of chocolate as well as some vanilla, and then also has a little bit of tang to it from the lemon juice and the vinegar. Together, that is an incredible bite of cake. Now, although this does have far less sugar than a traditional red velvet cake, it still needs to be eaten in moderation. But I love knowing that I'm eating something with clean, natural ingredients, which means I'm gonna feel just as good even after I eat it. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today to make this delicious cake. I've included a link to the full recipe and it's in the video description below, which takes you to my website, gentletummy.com. And I also invite you to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you know someone else who you think would love this recipe, please share it with them. And I cannot wait to have you hang out with me again in my kitchen.